Welcome back to the SparkFun Inventors Kit for LabVIEW tutorial series. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this section, we'll learn how to control a DC motor. Now, most microcontroller boards, like the red board, don't supply enough output current on their digital I.O. channels to drive the motor directly. So we have the digital I.O. channel connected to a transistor, which will control the motor. Check out the link below for a circuit schematic. In LabVIEW, I'll click on Help, and choose Find Examples. Then I'll click Search and type Links. We'll start by turning the motor on and off. And for that, I'll use the Lynx Blink Simple example. I'll double click to open it. We've seen this example before and we've used it to control an LED, but now we'll use it to control the motor. In the Serial Port dropdown, I'll choose the red board, which is COM3. And in the Digital Output channel, I'll use pin 3 because that's the pin that I've wired to the transistor. I've taped an LED to the end of the motor so it's easier to see on camera, but be careful with this. It spins pretty fast and it's possible something could go flying off if it's not attached properly. I'll go ahead and run the VI and LabVIEW will establish a connection to the red board. And once it does, I can click the LED control on the front panel to turn the motor on and off. Let's take a look at the code. I'll click the stop button and press Control E to bring up the block diagram. Like usual, we open a connection to the redboard. We're using the digital write one channel to turn the transistor on and off. This will spin the motor at full speed. At the end, we close the connection and handle any errors. What if we want to control the speed of the motor? To do that, we can use PWM. We basically turn the motor on and off at different rates to get different speeds. In order to use PWM, I'll delete the LED value and remove that broken wire. And then I'll right click on the digital write one channel and choose replace all pallets. And we'll replace it with a PWM VI. So I'll choose maker hub, links, peripherals, PWM, and set duty cycle. The digital output channel is still wired into our PWM channel. And that's fine, it's just a U8, and we're using pin 3, which is one of the PWM pins, so we can leave that as it is. Now we need a way to set the duty cycle, which ranges from 0 to 1. And we can see by hovering over it that it's a double input, so we need a double control. Go back to the front panel, and I'll right-click to bring up the functions palette, and then I'll choose numeric. And here we can see all of our numeric controls and indicators. Since we want to do speed control, I'll click the gauge and place it on the front panel. I'll rename it speed and I'll center the label. Our PWM duty cycle ranges from 0 to 1, not 0 to 10. So I'll double click the 10 and change it to a 1. Now our dial will go from 0 to 1. I'll switch back to the block diagram by pressing Control E and you can see that the speed indicator is created but we need a control. You can tell this is an indicator because the input terminal is on the left side. In order to change it to a control, I'll right click and choose change to control. That switches it to a control, but if we look on the front panel, it doesn't look any different, so that's fine. I'll move the control into the while loop so that it's tested every iteration of the while loop, and I'll wire it into the duty cycle. That should be all we need to do, so I'll press control E and I'll run the VI. Once LabVIEW is connected to the redboard, I can increase the speed dial and you'll notice nothing happens. This is because there's some static friction that we need to overcome to get the motor started. Once we get all the way up to full speed, the motor is able to start spinning and then we can slow down the speed of the motor. make sure to stop it before stopping the VI. So that does it for DC motor basics. We saw how to turn the motor on and off and then how to control the speed. You'll notice we didn't control the direction. To do that, we'd need more transistors and you could use something called an H bridge to control both speed and direction. 
Think about how you could use a DC motor in your next project. Maybe you could use a pressure sensor, like an accelerator, in your car. Or maybe you could attach fan blades to the DC motor and set the speed based on the ambient temperature to try and maintain a set point. Make sure to join us in the next section where we'll learn about servos. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.